In this video, we are back in Norfolk, Virginia for a walk along the downtown Norfolk waterfront. We are going to focus on Norfolk's Waterside District, a gathering place along the water with restaurants, bars, and special event venues. But we're going to show you what else is nearby along the water. This footage was filmed over several visits to the area over the last year. This is located on the Norfolk Harbor along the Elizabeth River. We've done a couple other videos of some of the attractions along this river. We will mention those along the way. We are going to start with the Pagoda and Oriental Garden. This pagoda was donated to Virginia from Taiwan as a part of their sister state relationship back in 1983. The pieces of the pagoda were manufactured in Taiwan, shipped to Norfolk, and assembled here by Taiwanese artisans. It was built on pillars that previously supported a 500,000 gallon molasses tank. The pagoda used to house a restaurant and tea house, but that closed some time ago. As of the time we visited, there was a business operating inside one night a week, offering Creole Southern soul food. The pagoda is surrounded by a garden and water features on an acre of land. The pagoda and garden area can be rented as a special events venue as well. We walk south along the harbor. All the places we see in this video are found along the Cannonball Trail, a walk through 400 years of Norfolk history. You can find a brochure online listing the 40 historic sites along the trail, or you can just find one of these signs along the way. As we walk from the pagoda and toward our next attraction, we pass the Lone Sailor Statue. There are a number of statues and memorials scattered around this area, honoring the sailors who served at the nearby Norfolk Naval Base. That lone sailor statue is facing the USS Wisconsin, which is a decommissioned battleship docked as a museum in the Norfolk Harbor. The Wisconsin is docked next to Nauticus, a maritime museum, which includes a museum within a museum, the Hampton Roads Naval Museum. There are exhibits about protecting our oceans. A new child's play area that just opened in 2023. A few small aquarium exhibits. A lot of hands-on interactive exhibits. and a relatively new exhibit about the history of Norfolk. With your ticket to Nauticus comes entry to tour the battleship Wisconsin. Much of this ship has been open to the public for you to go on a self-guided tour and see what life was like on this ship for the sailors deployed for months at a time. There are also two different guided tours for an extra fee 
where historical interpreters will give you a tour that includes some sections of the ship the public is not allowed to tour on their own. As Alice posts this video in January 2024, the Nauticus Museum is currently closed for renovation through February 29th, 2024. At the moment, you can only tour the USS Wisconsin. All the exhibits inside the museum are closed until the end of February, and ticket prices have been discounted since only the battleship can be toured right now. The construction is to reimagine some gallery spaces and the main lobby. So by the time Nauticus reopens, it will be somewhat different, possibly very different, than what we presented in our Nauticus tour video. But once it reopens, we definitely suggest checking out Nauticus and the USS Wisconsin. It's one of our favorite Norfolk attractions. Next door is the Half Moon Cruise and Celebration Center. This port is Virginia's only cruise terminal and is used by Carnival cruise ships and occasionally other cruise lines. The Cruise and Celebration Center's 54-foot windows overlooking the water also make it a popular wedding and event venue. Nearby, Jack and some family members recently took a cruise on a much smaller ship as the Victory Rover Naval Cruise boards nearby to take visitors on a cruise of the Norfolk Harbor, where they will get an up-close look at the Port of Virginia and the ships of the Navy's Atlantic Fleet. I put up a video about this naval cruise already. We will have a link to that at the end of this video. The cruise ships sail away next to Town Point Park, an oasis of green space in the urban setting of downtown Norfolk. It's an area where locals and visitors alike can meet to walk or have a picnic, but it's best known for the numerous festivals and cultural events that are held here in this park throughout the year. Nearby, we find the spirit of Mount Vernon, this boat is a dinner cruise put on by City Cruises that takes you along the Elizabeth River while you enjoy a buffet on this three-level ship that includes climate-controlled dining rooms, but also an outdoor observation deck. Okay, we are reaching the Waterside District that we want to show you. If you're enjoying this tour, please click the like button to register your positive vibes. We would really appreciate your support. Alongside the Waterside District, there is a marina. And there is one last boat we want to tell you about in this marina. It is the American Rover Sailing Ship. You can see the website here on this sign. I stay off boats these days, but Jack did this cruise years ago and really enjoyed it. They even have sunset cruises, which I'm sure are lovely. The cruise does not run in the winter, but you can enjoy this again starting in the spring. Whether you prefer the narrated naval base cruise or the dinner cruise or this two-hour American Rover sailing ship cruise, there are a number of ways to get out on the river at varying price points. So if that interests you, you should definitely check out these local cruises. We have made it to the Waterside District. I went here occasionally as a kid growing up. Originally, it was like a food court with some entertainment venues and specialty retail shops. Businesses declined. It eventually became mostly bars. And eventually it was shut down to be reimagined into what it is today. A gathering place with a food court, some restaurants, some bars, some event space. Some of this filming was done early in the day when there weren't many people there yet.
They do host special events like a New Year's party or Mardi Gras party. UFC fight pay-per-views are shown on the big screen. Musicians and other performers take the stage on a regular basis in the summer. They also have arcade games to play. We ate at a couple of these restaurants and we're going to share our experiences there with you. But first, let's look at the other places here where we didn't eat. There is PBR Norfolk, a popular country bar themed to pro bull riding. They're only open in the evenings. If you visit at night when they are open though, rides on the mechanical bull are free. They also have a Kogan's Pizza. This is one of three locations of a place that claims to be the best pizza joint in Norfolk. There's Guy Fieri's Smokehouse. This is a food stand out in the food court area that's selling ribs, brisket, and pulled pork using Guy's recipes and Guy's signature barbecue sauces. Upstairs is the Harbor Club. It's a venue you can rent for wedding receptions or other special events. There are a couple of dessert places that we like here also, so stay tuned, I'll tell you about those in a moment. But first, here's what's for dinner. In our visits here over the last year, we ate at two different places. The first is our favorite, Striper's Waterside. This restaurant is the Norfolk location of a popular Outer Banks seafood restaurant. The restaurant offers seafood, pasta, steak, sandwiches, and more, all with great views of the harbor. On one of our visits, we got a margarita flight with four flavors of margaritas. Jack had to help me drink them, even though they weren't large servings, but four is a lot. I love margaritas and I loved all of these flavors. Jack, on the other hand, does not usually like margaritas, but even he enjoyed the cranberry lime and blackberry margaritas thanks to the added berry flavor and a touch more sweetness than usual. Our favorite appetizer here is the crab dip with pita chips for $25. The price is steep, but it is so delicious. As far as entrees go, here's a look at the entrees ordered either by us or by family members or friends who ate with us. The fried crab cake sandwich for $26, ordered with onion rings as the side. The citrus salmon with risotto and green beans for $32. A cheeseburger with your choice of cheese and sweet potato fries or french fries for $18.50. Jack got one of these. He said the burger was good, but also that no burger should ever cost more than $15. This is the fried fish sandwich with fries for $25. The prices here are higher than I'd like, but the food all tastes good and we always get great service here. They have outdoor seating if you visit during warmer months. The other place we've been to multiple times over the years is Blue Moon Tap House. We like the food here too, but we've had several experiences that were not ideal. Here is the most recent one. We ate here for brunch. I ordered a Mimosa Crush for $7. I liked this drink a lot and we were off to a good start. I ordered the Hala Echa flatbread with hollandaise sauce, bacon, red onion, feta cheese, gruyere, tomato, baby arugula, and fried eggs for $13.99. It was absolutely delicious. I loved it. Jack ordered the Bananas Jammer French Toast. French toast with slices of banana, basically. We waited a reasonable amount of time for our food and then the server came to our table. He said our food was ready, but he wanted to let us know that they were out of bananas. So the kitchen made Jack something called, this is my jam French toast instead. 
It was French toast with strawberries and blueberries on it. He asked if that was okay. Again, this was asked when our food was ready to be served to us. I'm sure Jack could have said no and ordered something else, but then either my food would be served to me immediately while Jack had to wait for his new order to be ready, or mine would have been cold by the time his was ready. Or I guess they could redo both of our meals so that they'd be ready at the same time after Jack ordered something else that he wanted. But he felt pressured into saying, yeah, sure, I'll take whatever y'all made for me, because the food had been made by that point. And the only thing delaying our brunch would have been him refusing the substitute meal that they made without talking to him. He ate his French toast and thought it was pretty good. He liked strawberries and blueberries, but he would have enjoyed banana French toast a lot more, which is why that's what he ordered. And he should have been notified very soon after ordering that his meal was unavailable so he could decide what he wanted instead. I really only mention this because we've eaten here several times over the years and something like this has happened every time. The food is good, the prices are pretty reasonable, and the servers are perfectly nice. But details get forgotten or orders get changed around, and we actually have not eaten here in years because of it until we tried again with this brunch. Waterside has two dessert spots we like. One is the fudgery. My favorite part of visiting Waterside as a child was the fudgery. You could watch them make fudge, they would sing, and put on a show as they made it. The Fudgery is a chain that started in the Outer Banks and has 18 locations, mostly in tourist destinations around the country. It appears the singing and the show was discontinued since COVID at all the Fudgery shops we've been to in the last few years. But the candy treats, caramel apples, ice cream, and most importantly, the fudge made here is still delicious. The other spot is the Carolina Cupcakery. Alice doesn't love cake, but thinks their cake pops are just the right size with just the right amount of icing. I love all of their cupcakes. They have a wide variety. So we often stop off for a cupcake and a cake pop on our way out the door. This whole area is part of the 10 and a half mile Elizabeth River Trail which also includes other attractions like Fort Norfolk, a fort commissioned to be built by President George Washington in 1794, or Harbor Park, a minor league baseball stadium overlooking the water. But the other attractions of Norfolk will have to wait for another day. Click the link at the end of this video to see our visit to Nauticus and tour of the USS Wisconsin, or Jack's experience on the Naval Base Cruise, or our stay at our favorite hotel near Waterside, Hilton Norfolk, the Main. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so we can see you the next time we're traveling through.